He's a cowboy He's down on his luck His pockets are near empty He's sleeping in his truck The rodeo next Friday His bills are past due How will pay for rentry He ain't got a clue He's a cowboy It's his turn to ride He prays for eight seconds When they shout outside His future is uncertain His past he can't forget He's just a hard luck cowboy Life hasn't broken yet This is the hard part. Welcome back to Horse Horsemanship. Today we're going through the steps of working a horse. We have, I have ridden her a couple of times, but um, I want to show you how we got there like I have the other one. I mean, other horses in the past. Often I get asked, how old is a horse too old to train? This horse here is 20 years old. Um, you know, it's just going to be red and light and everything. And her life, she's had a good life up till now. So she's not been injured or anything. Because that's one of my pet peeves. Somebody's, especially at the rescues, and sorry rescues, you get mad or whatever. They'll have a 25-year-old, and to adopt it, they say, well, it's a, able to do light riding. That irks me, because I've been beat up enough. And by the time I'm 85, 90 years old, yeah, I'm going to give myself a few more years yet. 90 years old, you know, I've been hurt so much. Then they say, oh, yeah, he's good, but you got to take it easy on him. So, yeah, that almost came out wrong. But, you know, but I've been in pain all the time. I mean, shoot, I'm in pain a lot now, a lot of the time. So, you know, it's not fair to the horse. But anyway, with this mare, I knew her when I pulled her out. Uh, she's a friend of mine's horse, and I knew when she was a baby, and ironically, here we are 20 years ago, later, and I'm training her. I had, I tried to find them before we started filming, but I had pictures of her when she was a foal with me and old Smokey. So like I said, we'll be going through all the process. It's like, you know, just cause she's 20, only, oh, her being an older horse, well, I do kind of take into consideration, I don't push her as hard. You know, like I'll do a lot of walk trotting with her instead of asking for a canner, like extended trotting. And if she wants to go into a lope, fine. If she doesn't, that's fine too, we'll get there. So that way, you know, she'll still have a few years left for Paul. And, uh, you know, it doesn't, everybody said, well, they're so set in their ways at 20, you can't do it. Well, this is a prime example. She's 20. The black horse I filmed a few episodes back, he's 15. So that's not the case. Now, you take a horse that's been mistreated or on the worst case scenario, the really bad horses who's been spoiled for 20 years, yeah, I wouldn't touch them. Now, a 20 year horse that's been spoiled his whole life, I wouldn't touch him. Now, a horse 20 years old and maybe been mistreated, yeah, I'd handle that horse, but a spoiled horse for 20 years, might as well just put him out in the pasture and leave him alone. Because they, they will hurt you. And, uh, you know, her, we just started out. I mean, y'all have seen me do this time again. You know, we just asked, move out. And I have Clinton in here, young fella who's been helping me last week. 
But I'm just like any other horse. I'm not going to get in here and just ask her to move off. I mean, at a trot or canter. You know, the first step was put the saddle on her, let her get used to it. I used the safety line on it so I could keep her off that rail or nothing so she can't get in trouble. I can, if she did get in trouble, I'd get in there and, and stop it. Uh, you'll see my dressage whip here. When I climb on her, which will, I use my dressage whip, whip a little bit later. And like I said, I'm going to go through the stages. I have Clinton get down here and help push, push her like we did at the beginning. But, uh, but I, I'll use my dressage whip at some point to get her go forward. My spurs, spurs are not uh, that necessary, especially at the beginning to tell a horse to go forward. Spurs are your power steering for left, right. You may pick up the stomach, and, but that's another video. But they are not tough when you first start a green horse to hook them and say, let's go forward. And I'll get that in a little bit. So, you know, if y'all have seen me on tons of videos, first thing I want, you know, first. I want to be able to just pick up that nose and it comes to me. I will not get on a horse, my green horses, until I can flex them softly. This is her stiffer size, so she's going to move, so I'm going to hold it until she quits moving. She's, she'll soft through the neck. So I'm going to check my vertical, I just touch her mouth, and she's coming to my hands, coming to my hands, she's backing off the bridle, backing off that bit real nice. I'm going to have all that before I climb on the horse. That way, number one, if the horse does get a little bucky, the, um, because if you don't do all that, do that prep work, if you get a horse a little bucky and you try to grab them with a bit to disengage your hiney or something, they're going to explode worse. But, you know, in this case, if I get them that soft on the bit before I climb on her, there's going to be less explosion. So first, you know, I, before I climbed on her, I, uh, so I'm going to run my mouth while I'm up here doing my exercises. I got her next to a rail and padded on her so I could get her used to me being above her and I could play with a saddle. You know, y'all see me do it with horses. But in this case, I just did her. Now, when I first get on a horse, this is exactly what I do, right? Like I'm doing. I'm just flexing her. And if she goes to move off, that's fine. If she goes to move off. As long as she goes, you know, just like that. I'm just going to sit up here and be a dummy for a little bit. I'm just going to work this mouth back and forth. And I'm going to pull to my center line. Now, I see a lot of people, they tell you to pull down here. The problem, and I'm going to say this again, the problem pulling down here, they can drop that shoulder and go forward. But if I pull here, I'm getting away from that shoulder and less likely to go forward. So we're just going to work, then I'll work on my vertical, give it back to her. And some people say, well, she's opening her mouth a little bit. That's fine. You know, the more rides I get on her, she's going to stop that. You know, first thing people want to do, they want to put a canvas in on this horse. Now, right there, I want her to move forward. But instead of just keep bumping my legs, 
I just picked up my rein, moved to the side, get that, her front feet moving a little bit, and ask. Then you want to grab your whip. I'm going to bring Clinton in here. Yeah, his name's Clinton Lloyd. And uh, he, Carolina. pardon? From South Carolina. Yeah, from South Carolina. He's helped me a lot this past week. So I'm going to get her. This is how we first started her. I just had Clinton go in. You, you work her. Not yet. We started at a walk. This is, we're make believing. We're, so at first I want Clinton just ask this mare to walk off. And let her get used to me up top. You know, if we go right into a trot, you know, she'd lava explode. She's not now, but let's say we haven't done this before. All right, Clinton, go ahead, ask for a trot. Not quite so hard, just a little bit softer. Alright, try it again. There you go, that was better. See, she didn't overreact that time. When you really hit, she went forward. Go on, get in there. Remember, pick up that hand, point. Point, don't get your, there you go. So I'm going to use Clinton to push his horse forward. Now I'm going to use him also to get this horse to turn. So what I'm going to do, reach down, pick up. Clinton's going to step in front of that shoulder and drive her out. I'm going to reach down, pick up. Now also what I'm doing while I'm riding, I'm taking my outside leg and giving her some outside leg. All right, back off. Ask her to move forward. I'll keep taking over. But like I said, we're going to make believe this is our first ride. So if she stalls out, Clinton's job is to come in here and push her forward. And right now we want to walk. We're just going to. I'm going to pick up, we're going to reverse our direction and go. Now when I have a reverse, ask for a reverse, as soon as she hits that turn, I release my directional line. But also, you'll see me lay my offline on her a lot. Bump her up. All right, let's ask for a trot. Don't get, there you go. Get that hand up a little higher. The point, that's it. All right, boom. So we're just gonna add a little more to it here. You know, we start off small and work, work our way up. Have her head, I'm gonna turn her up here, Clinton. The nice thing about using little steps like right now, you know, she's not I'm not letting her go very far. Alright, back off. So when I we turn her back and forth. So she was getting a little uppity on it. I'm doing a small, short turn. I'm not doing a, going around the whole arena before I ask for a turn. And yeah, what's nice about, especially this, the stage at the beginning, 
if you watched her, when I asked for that turn at a trot, she really got a hiney under. Well, right there is a good case. She's, she's turned, she's crossing over nicely on the front. She's got, she's putting weight on that back. Boom. But every time Clinton would ask for a trot, I'm going to give her some leg at the same time. So at some point, I want to ride forward. Then I, if she don't move forward, I'll have Clinton back me up. Ride forward. She don't ride forward. I got Clinton to back me up. I stop riding. We stop. Yeah, you know, this mare's got what we call a lot of stop in her. Yeah, you know, it's not because she's 20 years old. That's just the way she is. She could be four year old and she'd be that way. So now we just walk off. Pick up. Boom. Now I can add more to that, even at. I'm going to pick her up. Clint, I want you to walk into that shoulder pretty quick. Walk, 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 walk. Psst, psst, psst. There you go. Good. Ask for a stop. Pick up. Psst, psst. Good. Ask for a stop. I'm going to ask for back at the same time. Get around. There you go. Ask for a stop. Hoop. I'm going to pick up, while she's backing off. I mean, I'm really getting a handle on this horse. No, 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 no. You didn't see that hand. That hand goes. My cue for Clinton to help me do a reverse is when my hand slides down, I think the horse just saw Cindy. Good girl. Yeah, it's so much easier to start these horses with a partner buddy system. Ask for you now when I first started asking for a back on her, she she was soft to the bit. So right now, this is her lead foot. If she would go to back up, this foot's gonna move. So I'm gonna act get her in frame, give her a tap, tap, tap. I'm gonna tap that foot that's forward, I'm gonna tap that side, tap that side. This foot move forward. So whatever foot is time to move for her to back up softly, that's the foot I'm gonna use on that. So eventually I won't be able to put my feet forward and just push on my kennel and ride backwards. She's not gonna do it yet. And her just ride backwards. My hands are not there to tell her back up. My hands are there to get that back up, her back physically up. So it's easier for her to back up. Of course, this might be a chore. Then put that whip down and hand me the other one, but keep it to your side. Put it in your other hand. Because the bad thing about teaching horses to move off with certain tools, <laughs> somebody hands you that tool, they think you're going to want to move off. So now, oh, good girl. I want to take over. You know, let's say you've done this a couple of times. And uh, and she's, I'm going to get her in arena next time I ride her because she's big enough. Arena, I'm going to have probably better results because she is so tall. But I want to use my please, pretty please, sugar on rule. And I got my dressage whip and I'm going to tap behind my leg. And sometimes I might go to butt, but most of the time I'm going to try to tap behind my leg. So I'm going to tap. Please, blurry, please, and I can put some sugar. 
behind my leg. So I ask for a stop, bump, bump, a little bit of sugar. And I'm just putting as much sugar as it takes to just walk right now. I squeeze a little bit and she's not moving. That's why you will, periodically, you will see me tap. Because right now I'm squeezing my leg. Please, pretty please, sugar. In other words, her footfall is my please, pretty please, with sugar. Because I'm squeezing. I'm squeezing again. Please, pretty please, sugar. Squeeze, pretty please. Please, pretty please, sugar. And we'll do it again. Please, there. Now that worked. See, the length of time my legs on her is telling her what gate I want her in. So what I was doing with my legs, I was, once again, I was squeezing, please, pretty please, the sugar. Now right there, I got a reaction out of her, so I didn't just kept at her until she tried it. I want to see a reaction. Please, pretty please, ride forward. Please, pretty please, sugar. All right, now I'm squeezing. Squeezing. I'm gonna pull. Now, now you might see me use that rail. I'm gonna use my inside leg, say get up, get around. Sit down, inside leg, roll my spur. Inside leg, I'm gonna roll my spur. I'm not gigging, I'm rolling. So I'm gonna roll like that, boom. Stop. Back up, I'm gonna roll, 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 roll my spur, roll it, roll it. <laughs> Same way. Boop, 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 boop. Pick up, roll, and wing. I'm using my inside, by well, that time, I use my inside spur to help bend her. Then I roll with my outside that time. As Cindy says, David, you do things sometimes and I don't even know I, when I do them. But that time I use a combination of both my legs. I'm gonna use one spur to get her to bend. Then I'm gonna use my other spur by rolling, push out front and around. Then we'll use this spur to get her bend. Then we use this one, push her the shoulder around. Boom. Now I'll squeeze it and say trot. She didn't trot, so I now every time I ask for a stop, just feet first, hands second. Sometimes so quick you won't catch it. Feet first, my hand second. But I will to back her up every time I stop. So we're gonna go the other way, inside to roll a little bit, bend that back, rib cage, and then outside pusher. She wants to come off this rail a little bit. And you know, I'm not worried about her wanting to come off that rail a little bit right now. And, and also, you know, I take a little bit extra time with her and I would with a normal horse, but part of it's her age. And sorry, Paul, but part of it's because how old a person is going to be to ride it. You know, I want, you know, I want to train a, train a soft horse. And a soft horse, 
and as, as safe as possible horse I can for the owner. Back up. There we go. Get it inside to, to help bend that rib cage a little bit. Just roll that spur. Then I'm going to take my outside, roll that spur around. Yeah, a big horse like this, you get so much more done in an arena than I can in here. But I, like I said, I, I haven't cantered her yet because like, she is 20 year old, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'll do a, when I get in the arena, I'll do a lot of extended trots and everything else. But she's coming along real good. And the nice thing about the way I'm approaching her, she's going to have a good handle on her. And, uh, She'll stay as healthy as she is right now. And that's my two objectives. First objective, keep her healthy. Second objective, get the best handle I can on this horse. And when I'm saying that, <coughs> as best as her body can handle. Now, fortunately with her, like I said, she's had a good life, you know. So, I'll, I'm going to end up probably, you know, some 20 year old, just like us. You see one 60 year old person, they look like they're 80 years old, and you see another one and you think they're 40. I don't know where I fall in that. I don't want to know either. But, um, she's doing pretty good I like where she's at like I said we get in the arena here next ride and I could do a lot more with her and then I'll start letting her go I, I'm able to be able to extend her try it out some more and she'll just automatically go into to lope I'm not worried about it I mean because that first lope if it's just she gets if it's her idea and she goes into it it's going to be so much better than me sitting there just whipping the tar out of her and gigging her and everything else to say hey you're going to lope that's when it's going to break down and fall apart and that's usually when the horse is going to start bucking and she hasn't bucked yet and i want to keep her that way and that's another reason i like going slow and develop that mouth and everything so i like before we sign off you know like I say clinton get in here clinton That's your spot, X spot. <laughs> anyway, Clinton's been with this past week, and he's been real, he, he don't think so, but he's been real help, and I hope he's learned, he learned something. Yes, sir, definitely have. So what have you picked up so far? I'm gonna put uh, you on the spot. Well, so far, <coughs> Lake use, I picked that up. Uh, but that's just my personal riding. Um, patience and persistence, that's a big thing. Don't try rushing the horse, because our horse is gonna pick up on their own. Yeah. Um, and uh, like you said earlier, working with a partner, it makes it a lot easier. Oh, yeah, it does. You found that out just with her and, and a big boy in there and everything else. I mean, we worked one supposedly, you know, supposed to like buck a little bit. And he's a little trippy. And the owner said, well, David, I can have the farrier out here to reset his feet. <laughs> That's not why he was trippy. And... I rode him. Clinton's nice thing with Clinton. He rides good enough. I've had him to ride it too, so I can get a better perspective. It really helps. But no, this horse is trippy because he's number one, don't know where his feet's at, no, not at all. and he's lazy. I mean, he's pure but lazy. I cannot put it any nicer than that. So, you know, we did ground pin work with him and did this. We did the buddy assist with him, so I can sort of get him to relax and do this yada yada yada. And yesterday we took him out on a trail course, and that helped him immensely. It did. Because he had to figure out where his feet was at. If he didn't, he either hit the bridge or hit a log or hit whatever, tabletop. So, and that's what that horse needs, you know, he needs to quit being lazy. And that's why that horse is tripping. And good example, that's part of the reason, you know, I had Clinton out there riding in a shank bit. Because with a shank bit, you get a horse that's trippy like that. If you know what you're doing, 
you grab hold of that bridle, lift your hands up a little bit, and get them shoulders up. When it gets ready to trip, get in there, lift them shoulders up, and say, hey, wake up. And I'll tell you what, they'll learn to get light on their feet. But that could be a whole another episode. So, and you know, another com quick comment, everybody talks a lot of people, they say, well, you know, they'll be asked what kind of horse Bravey is, and they'll tell them, and they say, well, I just got a trail horse. That, do you take one of the good trail horses, I take one of them over any high dollar horse out there, because that, a good trail horse is going to keep you safe. So, if you're riding out there, just a trail rider, do not put yourself down, because you just riding a trail horse. That trail horse is just as special as any horse that's sitting here doing a spin. Now, on that subject, to me, a trail horse shouldn't know how to turn on haunches and, and be light. But no, it shouldn't be able to do like a reining horse. You know, that's just, he shouldn't. So, you know, don't let it, don't judge yourself. I let other people judge you because you just ride a trail horse. And because if you have somebody give that look like you're not wearing a 20X hat, just look at them and say, you know what, I'm damn proud I got a trail horse because that horse keeps me safe every time I go out. So that's what counts. It's not how expensive something is, it's the quality of what it is. So with that preaching for today, as I always say, be true to horse, they'll be true to you. First and foremost, you know what, I haven't said it too much lately, but be true to yourself and don't let everybody else dictate you just because that means a lot. Once you're true to yourself, life does get better. And to my kids, grandkids, and a special person out there, watch Day Lake Katie, God bless, take care. Yep.